Dear mother, now I will gather myself together and let you have proper information on how I am. The ticket was good to Stettler. The agent did not know that the rail had last fall been extended to Custer, so it was unfortunate I landed in Stettler, which is a little bit bigger than Thorzo. From Tuesday 26th to Friday 29th, without money, without knowing the language or knowing a soul, I was in a tight spot. Now I have four dollars, and with them I went and got a room at the first and best hotel and went out to see if I could find someone who could please speak either Danish or German. The next day I happened on an Odaniska from the district between Alborg and Randers, and he helped me by all means except with money. The first day I came, I had ridden a card to Notre Dame, but I was stupid enough to put it on the train and thereby lost four days. It was real lucky that the agent in Copenhagen wrote to Pete and told him that my ticket was good to Stettler. That letter Peter received Wednesday. He went to Castor on Thursday, stabled horse and buggy, took the train Friday morning, and so it went on till I found him on the street as I was going back to the rail to look for him. My shoes were so dreadfully dirty. So I got a pair of boots and a blouse that was so lovely, I thought. At four o'clock, we entrained Eastwood to Castor. There we found his next youngest brother, Martin, and the neighbor who waited for us. Two hours later, we were on our way home. Uh, the other two in a wagon, we two in a buggy. The neighbor's wife was very glad to see me. She has been saying that she would not stay if Pete did not get married. It was just at haying time and they were very busy. The houses made most like peasant houses. The logs that are laid on top of each other with other small logs pressed into and nailed into the cracks between them. The inside is much better than you think. A sort of heavy cardboard, same breadth and thinness as heavy paper used in the country is nailed on wall and ceiling in the same way as hangs paper. The stove stands simply on the floor and the chimney is just a plain pipe of tin which goes right through the ceiling and roof. When I came, there was nothing in the cabin but a bed with, in which three slept and a trunk. In the time I lived there, I slept at the neighbors. They were very hospitable. 30 years childless. She's very clever at cooking and baking, but never in my life have I seen anyone so shabby. The day after I arrived, Pete asked me if the understanding was that I would stay. I replied that I would stay, but I wouldn't get married. And without that, there was absolutely no more discussion about the possibility of me staying here. If you could have heard him, mother, how he pleaded and asked and begged me to stay, but not that day, just later. How he talked to the Brennans, the neighbors, and they advised him, this is what we should do. I should continue sleeping at the Brennans, but we should cook our own meals. Thus, it should go on until harvest was completed. Then Pete would rent out his land and we could both go away from the place. He would then help me find a job, which is an easy matter in Alberta. And then he would go uh, to the States to work for the winter. Meanwhile, for a few days, it went well, real well. But the people began to be busybodies. They said nothing to us but to the neighbors, and of course he passed it on to Pete. Many of Pete's friends came and congratulated him or asked him when the wedding would be. It got so bad I had to, to decide to move before my good name and reputation and his too was completely ruined. Now Chris, that's the eldest son after Pete knows a Danish family in a little station town that lies between Red Deer and Locom. The husband is a smith. He has a nice board house beside his smithy. 
His wife is a practical nurse, has learned ladies tailoring and sewing. Chris wrote to them to see if they could have me for a while until I learned the language. And he could t take another place. Well, Pete would rather, when he realized that without risk of seeming ungrateful that I was never to marry him, <laughs> have he, he would have had me go home again, but I don't want to do that. And now he has no more money. Wednesday, the answer came, but we didn't get it till Thursday. For the whole week, it has rained and thunderstormed each day. They will gladly give me shelter to Black Falls as long as is necessary. So I packed my things and planned to go to Custer on Saturday. But for the first, the weather was so bad, and the second, there was no train on Saturday. Then we decided to drive to Castro on Sunday, stay overnight there, and then I would take a train seven o'clock Monday morning. I had said that it thundered and rained, but this is something no one takes any notice of unless it rains so much it interferes with the work. It rained, however, so much that we did not get a start in the forenoon. And then, now comes the awful part. Around eight, as we sat drinking coffee, the thunderstorm was suddenly overhead, and, and after it rained really hard, about 15 minutes, it began to hail some hailstorms. Oh, first there were a few, hun few hailstones uh, between the rain, then nothing but hail. Oh, Martin tried to go over to the neighbors, but for, before he had gone 10 steps from our door, the gray stiff felt hat you know, you know, the one, the real cowboy hats, cracked so that it hung down over his eyes and he had trouble finding his way back to the door. And still the next day, he had small blue-green bruises on his hands and throat. A hundred chickens were killed in the hail. They were old enough they should be laying. The horses stood in water over their knees and the pigs were practically swimming. But the worst of it all was, however, is that it, Pete's wheat was completely smashed to the ground, knocked down. Alone, this amounts to about $1,500. He was naturally blackly dis desperate. The first year, there was no rain. Result, no harvest. Second year, all horses died. Now in the spring, two horses died, then the cabin burnt down. And then I come and wouldn't marry him. And then to crown it, he gets hailed out and won't have any money left now until harvest, if he gets any wheat at all. You can understand his disappointment by the country. I'm sure he has worked all over America, but he probably won't have any trouble finding work but he doesn't want to be a traveling man. His and his neighbor, whose wife hates the country and who was mighty glad about the hail, are selling all their horses and rent renting their land out. The, with these funds, they are going down to the States and starting a restaurant. Uh, when they have got so, something built up and get started, I'll probably go down to work for them. But. Until then, I will stay in Blackfolds with the Danish family I have told you about above. If I could get a job here in town in the meantime, I would take it because I could use the money, even if Pete and Martin will give whatever I may ask. Finally, Martin would rather I stayed here over winter so we can easily slip over and he can see me occasionally. He probably thinks that by before spring he will have persuaded me to marry him. But that will be a lie if my nose does not freeze off my face in the winter. Have I told you about the day I traveled with for 24 hours? Since the time we parted, and till I came to my destination, he sent me two cards and four-page letter. And then he, he wrote that if the place of Pete did not suit me, I should write and to him, and he'll find me one. And if I do not have money, He'll send me a ticket. <laughs> well, when Pete found this out, well, I thought he'd go crazy. 
I was more determined not to marry him. And when on the road home from the post office, he asked me for the last time, I told him of no uncertain terms. The day after, and when Martin went to Custer and Pete came home drunk. Well, was that a way to behave, Mother? I can't stand him. His manners, his walk, the way he talks. Everything disgusts me. Even if he did not have red hair <laughs> and was as ugly as original sin, I would not marry him. I have even, if he is completely courteous, he is basically absolutely uncouth. No, never. Then I would rather go down to my travel friend who was so polite to me. He has a large hardware store. There's a stud farm too. There was nothing Pete was more afraid of that, that I should write down there. He was absolutely sure after that month after I went down, I would marry Welderborn. Well, that's his name. He was born in Godvard, and his uncle has a farmstead or land there. Can you not in a discreet way find something out about his uncle if you get up around there? His name is Niels Kilson, or something like that. Uh, I, I think now I've said most things important. If there is something you want to know, you will have to ask me. Oh, I was terribly sick six weeks ago. I had cooked apricots in a kettle, or rather a casserole, for I and kettles are non-existent, where the enamel was chipped, and I was feeling bad. Thursday noon till Friday noon. But there I was hoping to go to a dance. A neighbor lady gave me some fruit salts or something like that. I threw up everything as fast as I got it in me. And, and she gave me some pot wine, then milk, but nothing helped. Finally, I got her to give me some water with lemon slices in it. That helped. But no Dane's stomach and stamped up to the food they have here. I shall tell you how they eat in the morning. They have oatmeal, porridge and meat and potatoes, coffee or tea and layer cake, and another kind of cake and jam. Soup of any kind is never around or they never have gruel. At noon, they have meat and potatoes with sauce and meat and it's first sliced and browned in a pan, onion they use raw, along with three or, or four kinds of jam and jelly, prunes or apples, apricots or plums, coffee or tea with pickles, and the last something they call pie, <laughs> which resembles a prune tart. For coffee, either layer cake, if wasn't, one doesn't care for that, then crackers. In the evening, meat and bread, coffee or tea, cookies or cake, and all these different things they eat and drink at the same time. But God, how I laughed when I saw Martin eat meat, potatoes, green peas, kick at once, and wash the last mouthful of pickles down with coffee. Maybe you think I am lying, but you can come over and see for yourself. Pete and Martin had decided that they would return to the old country, as they call it, in the winter and see if they can find a wife to bring back. They hadn't written to the agent, but luckily had not sent the letter before the hell came. And even if Martin's crop to have no harm, he would not go without Pete. Now, a week ago, he got a letter from a girl he had kept company with in Sealand inviting him to come and take her back here. If I won't have him, it could happen that he actually will go home and marry her. Well, I must stop as it's near supper time and I am also half melted from the heat. Say hello especially to the sisters and to the pastor and tell him that Canada is so Catholic that even in a small place like Castor they have dedication of a new church on Sunday. And it was bigger than the chapel at home. There's a church in Stettler and one in Red Deer. Even out in the country where Pete lived, where there's even no town, there were usually miles between towns and homes. 
there's a cabin where mass is read every 14 days or three weeks. There are some so many French here. <laughs> it's like that all over Alberta. You will no doubt write me for my birthday. I had my photograph taken in my buggy the first Sunday I was in Notre Dame. I don't know how long it will be before I get the pictures, but I'll send you some as soon as I get some. I wish I could ride as well as I can drive horses, but when I try this, you'll probably hear that I've broken my neck because they are really strong, and I found that when I held the reins for myself. I wish I brought my bicycle. The roads here are excellent. A person can go miles without seeing a stone or a hill. Martin would gladly provide me with a horse, but I'd have to buy feed, and that takes money, which a bicycle does not. <laughs> Greet Charles. Tell him he should be first over here to see the cowboys tussle with wild horses. Every time I see something like that, I wish you were here, Charles. Now, now you have it all. <laughs> If you have it as well as I have it, I, I can't wish you anything better. My address, meanwhile, is Maryland, Blackfalls, Alberta, Canada.